Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> not even a moment's um, without, with not even a moment's notice, any of us could start suffer a stroke. And when that happens, our life literally depends entirely on a team of professionals who can respond quickly and capably. On May 24th, I participated in Take Your MPP to Work Day, an initiative by the of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. It was a valuable opportunity. We followed the path of a typical stroke patient from the time they enter the emergency room door to the time they are in rehab and every stage in between. And speaker, at every stage, we depend on our ends, the people with the right skills to be there for, for us at the right time. And time is of the essence. As the nurses often say, time is brain. I want to thank Catherine Walsh, Tasha Vanderleet, Anita Grass, and all the nurses at the Stratford General Hospital whose work is making a difference in the lives of patients. I also want to recognize the nurses at all our hospitals in Perth Wellington. We are so fortunate to have the care and ex ex their expertise in every corner of our riding. And to the government, I say, <clears throat> let's listen to them. Let's work to address their concerns. Let's hold on to the RNs we have and hire the new ones we need. The future of health care depends on it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member of Statements, the member from Kitchener Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Last week, my office learned that St. Mary's Hospital, which has a record of nearly 100 years of serving the people of Kitchener Waterloo with excellent care, St. Mary's has been trying to secure capital funding for its hybrid EP cath lab for surgery and diagnosis. This concept was approved four years ago, both by the Ministry of Health and Long Term Care and the Ministry of Finance, but despite this, the funding has not materialized. The room for this lab has been sitting empty. There are 11 full-service regional community hospitals in Ontario. St. Mary's is the only one of those 11 that is left waiting for this critical lab. In less than two years, Barry was able to apply for and be approved for and receive funding for their cath lab. At St. Mary's, the diagnostic catheterization waitlist is between six to eight weeks, while other communities have same-day service. The people of Kitchener-Waterloo shouldn't have to suffer because of this kind of service disparity. I know the member from Kitchener Centre has been fighting hard to get some commitment from the ministry. I know the member from the Kitchener Conestoga is supportive of this important regional service. We are simply asking for what every other cardiac regional program in Ontario already has. Volume has consistently increased by 10 to 20 percent each year, and we need to catch up with the rest of the province. I worry that this hospital is currently stretching human and capital resources. Physicians in the area have expressed concern that if this continues, patient care will be compromised. I am asking today on behalf of St. Mary's that the ministry release the funding that was committed four years ago. Let's get this done. Our community cannot afford to wait any longer. Thank you. Thank you. The member from um, Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I'm sure we're all aware of by now, the world lost a giant this past weekend. Muhammad Ali, considered by many, if not most, to be the greatest boxer of all time, passed away at the age of 74. It's nearly impossible to overstate the global impact that Ali had. He meant so much to so many people. Not only was he a beautiful boxer, where he cemented his legacy with memorable bouts like the fight of the century, the rumble in the jungle, and the thriller in Manila. I even recall doing a class presentation in third grade on Ali's first fight with spoken Joe Frazier. Even though I was really too young at the time to understand his importance, I vividly remember everyone making a huge deal about it. But really, it's what he did outside the ring that, really, that will leave an impact in the world. He was a civil rights campaigner, a poet, and a fierce advocate for world peace, a truly iconic figure that transcended the boundaries of sport, race, and country, an inspiration who stood up for what he truly believed. Even when it meant sacrificing nearly everything he'd worked for in his life to achieve, his combination of talent, charm, intensity, competitiveness, and compassion captivated the world in a way that won't ever be seen again. He was, and always will be, the greatest. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Stormont Dundas, South Pine Gary. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to pay homage to a staunch advocate for transparency and consumer rights who passed away on Sunday, May the 6th. Dr. Earl Schumann, as many Ontarians, invested in the purchase of a new home. His investment, however, gave rise to claims of Tarion Warranty Corporation, the monopoly provider for new home warranties in Ontario. 
Throughout the years, Dr. Schuman advocated for things many Ontarians take for granted. He demanded that the laws related to new, building new homes be respected. He sought to have those laws enforced. He fought to ensure consumers could be confident that their family's largest purchase is secure and will serve them well throughout the years. Dr. Sherman's efforts also highlight the spirit that makes our province a great place to live and settle. He used his experience with Tarion and his appeal, licensed appeal tribunal to help other homeowners facing the same struggle. I am confident this House will agree, Speaker, that the spirit of diligence, perseverance, and aiding others is an inspiration of, to Ontarians from all walks of life. Dr. Schulman's tireless advocacy for transparency, dependability, accountability, and consumer protection should inspire us all to do better by consumers in Ontario and to always keep their interest at heart. Dr. Earl Sherman, thank you, and may you rest in peace. Thank you. Further member statements to the Minister from Brampton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Brampton is the ninth largest city in Canada and desperately needs a university. Universities have been proven to have an amazing social impact on cities. They are innovators for developing greater cultural and arts. They are able to have a very powerful economic impact, and they also encourage innovation and investment. Now, universities are well proven as city builders. They encourage the growth of a city and revitalization of a city. And as the ninth largest city in Brampton, uh, in, in the country, Brampton certainly needs a university. Now, Sheridan College is on its path, it's on its way to becoming a university, and we encourage that development. But Brampton needs a standalone university as well. My personal story is that I wouldn't be here today, Mr. Speaker, as a deputy leader of a political party in Ontario, but for my education. But it wasn't just the degree that I received. It was all the academic activities around my studies, the, the uh, clubs that I was a part of, the activities that I participated in. And I don't want other students to see, uh, have a barrier to accessing education. In Brampton, sometimes it can take up to two hours to commute to the nearest university. There are costs associated with living. Um, on residents, so we need to ensure that students don't see a barrier to accessing education. And in such a large and vibrant city, we need to ensure that our students have access to education, not only for the students but for the growth of the city. I encourage this government to work towards building a Bramp or building a university in Brampton. Thank you. Thank you, Senior Member Davis, the member from Scarborough Agency. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. June marks the 32nd anniversary of Seniors Month in Ontario. This year's theme is Seniors Make a Difference. I'd like to recognize seniors who make a difference every day across this province, Mr. Speaker. Seniors are a valuable member of our community through their knowledge, experiences, skills, and energy. They volunteer extensively in organizations like Scarborough Hospital, St. Paul Lamoury Centre, Center for Immigrant and Community Services, Asian Court Community Services Association, and the Asian Court Rotary Club. They also give generously. Research shows that they make more charitable donations than any other age group. Oh, wow. In my riding of Scarborough Asian Corps, there are many great agencies like North American Muslim Foundation, Villa Elegance, Seniors Guyanese Friendship Association, Care First, and Toronto Jinkin Seniors Association that provide quality care and services that keep seniors healthy, active, safe, and independent. June is one month where we can all recognize seniors uh, province-wide. They make a difference in our community by being leaders, mentors, volunteers, and engaged citizens. As we celebrate our seniors, Mr. Speaker, we need to recognize and appreciate the contributions they made and continue to make in our families, workplaces, and communities. Let us all take the time to celebrate and honor seniors for everything they do in making a difference to this province. Seniors like Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members of the statement, the member from Chatham Kent Essex. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. The Muslim community plays an important role in shaping and building of the free, peaceful, and pluralistic province we all have a privilege to live in. Inshallah, the Muslim community does amazing work to enrich our beautiful province, and I commend their continued efforts to promote cultural understanding and harmony. Today, we are entering the month of Ramadan, where Muslims all over the world are celebrating this blessed time with family, friends, and the community. Ramadan is a blessed month of fasting, charity, and doing good deeds for Muslims across the globe, and it's a beautiful glimpse into the lives of many Canadian Muslims. It's inspiring to see everyone come together with unity that this month brings along with it. This is a wonderful opportunity for Ontario, as well as many other Canadians across the globe, to learn and join in this holy month of purification and celebration. 
May this month be filled with love and happiness and good health for all of those partaking in Ramadan. On behalf of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Caucus and my colleagues here in the Ontario Legislature, I wish all of you a happy and blessed Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you for the member's statement. The member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise in the House today and share several important occasions we are marking today. Firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of those who fought for our freedom 72 years ago today at the Battle of Normandy. What has now gone down in history books as D-Day, June 6, marks an important turning point for Allied forces in ending World War I. This day is especially significant as my father fought for the Polish Navy on a British battleship and was present during that historic battle. While he was very lucky to come home safely, so many perished in the line of fire, sacrificing their lives for freedom. Today is also the anniversary of the death of Sir John A. Macdonald, who passed away 125 years ago on June 6, 1891. His passing is being commemorated today in my riding of Kingston and the Islands at the National Historic Gravesite at Cataraqui Cemetery. Finally, I also would like to mention the wonderful celebration of the 47th annual Lviv Ukrainian Folklore Festival. This event always offers the residents of Kingston and the islands an unparalleled insight into the enchanting Ukrainian culture. Every year, they ignite our senses with delicious cuisine, beautiful artwork, and lively music. As a child, I remember watching the beautiful Mackie dancers with wide-eyed wonder. A special thank you goes out to Nadia Luchuk, the chair of the Ukrainian Pavilion, and her brother Lubomir. Without them and their outstanding energy, this event would simply not have been possible to keep going for all of those years. Kingston and I are indebted to them for their passion in preserving Ukrainian culture and traditions. Dia kuyu, merci, miigwech, thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Ramadan Mubarak to you and to the House. Uh, Speaker, I'm here to rise in support of Men's Health Awareness Week. As you remember, this is a subject of my private, most recent private member's bill, where we want to celebrate the week immediately preceding the third Sunday of June as Men's Health Awareness Week. Now, June 19th, which is the third Sunday, is, of course, Father's Day. So I'd like to take an opportunity to, to uh, say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, and I'll be thinking of my own father on that day when the time comes. Thank you very now, much. Speaker, I had hoped that the House leaders would be able to get together and adopt Men's Health Awareness Week in this session of, uh, of, before we recess this week. That hasn't happened. But like any MPP here who could be disappointed with a private member's bill, I will persevere, and maybe next year we can celebrate it. But for now, Speaker, I want to say that next week, which would be Men's Health Awareness Week. There will be, it will be celebrated across the province. Uh, Brendan Shanahan, the president of the Toronto Maple Leafs Club, has sent a letter of support for Men's Health Awareness Week to the Premier of Ontario, and also noting that in the federal government, they've, donated, they've given $4 million over four years to help promote BC government has given $5 million over five years to help promote Men's Health Awareness Week. And Justin Trudeau is releasing a video today where he talks about the few small things that men can do in their lives to make positive change, like use the Men's Health Awareness Foundation's You Check tool. Answer a bunch of questions about what's on your life, and it'll make very positive recommendations of how you could change your life for the better. So, Speaker, I will be celebrating Men's Health Awareness next week because it's important as we raise families, as we look after our businesses and our friends, that every now and then we take a moment to think about ourselves. Because, quite frankly, Speaker, we're worth it. Yes, thank we you. Are. Yes, we are. I thank all members for their statements.